Hello Steve here at West Green. Welcome to part 6 of building the Connoisseur um, J15 uh, 060 tender locomotive. So far I've built the tender. If you looked at parts 1 and 5, uh, I'll just show you what I've done. Um, oh. Having built the tender in parts 1 to 5, what I've done now, I spent Three or four hours cleaning it all up, scraping stuff off everywhere. Uh, then I gave it a good clean. I used, first of all, I used some washing up liquid, but I put baking soda in it. Oh, yeah, baking soda, baking powder, I think it's called, which is a alkaline product. Uh, I used, I wanted to get the grease off, which is why I used some washing up liquid. But the other thing is, um, with the baking powder, it's alkaline which means it neutralizes the flux from uh, the acidic flux. After I'd done that, I um, I gave it a clean up with um, this stuff here. This is called Pitambari powder. Uh, it's a Indian cleaning product. It's a pink powder. You get it from Indian grocers. Anyway, so it's very good. So, um, Anyway, so I've uh, I've cleaned it all up, and basically once I've got it, I've got to put some more primer on and go over it a bit. But once I've done that, and I'm not touching it anymore until I finish the loco, and it will be finally painted together. I just wanted to protect it from tarnish. Okay, now with this kit, which is an excellent kit, I highly recommend um, connoisseur kits, as indeed most O gauge modelers would. Um, if you're a beginner, they're super kits. Uh, they're very, very easy. Anyway, um, Jim suggests building the basic chassis first, then putting, then stopping that, and then building the basic, uh, the foot plate, cab, and a few things, just to make sure that all marrows up. There's no clearance issues. I was going to do that. Um, however. I've got a dilemma with motors. I've got a couple of motor options. I've got this Canon 1833, which has got a fold-up uh, gearbox, which is the one uh, Jim Supplies has got a fold-up gearbox. I don't particularly like those because I just don't like fold-up gearboxes. I've also got a motor gearbox uh, with a skew uh, gears, which is fairly big and it may or may not fit. So I've decided to build the body first, that way I can build the chassis and get all the spaces in, trying the motor to see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, then I'll have a rethink. Um, the other thing is that what I want to do is these are built rigid. Uh, in other words, there's three bearings in each side solid, uh, soldered solid into the frames. What Jim does, if you run a straight edge along, uh, like a ruler along one side, the, the centre axle is ever so slightly higher than the, out, uh, the outside. The reason being, if you've got some unlevel track and you've got a bump, it doesn't sort of teeter and seesaw in the middle. So what I want to do, I wanted to compensate the front two wheels, but I can't I can't put the motor on the back because of the way this, uh, uh, the spaces are. So I've, I've got to put the motor in the middle. Uh, I can't put horn guides in the front or rear, but I might be able to put one in the middle, which at least I can set it up high and the springs will still push down uh, and give contact with the rail all the time. Anyway, this will be all explained later in videos as I go through it. Okay, here's the basic foot plate. Uh, it's got a fold up uh, splasher in the middle. Um, the drag beam folds up, there are two etched lines, half etched lines, and there's nickel silver valences will fit right in there. And then I've got the buffer beam. So that's my, that's my basic foot, uh, foot plate, uh, which I've just pulled out of the box today. Um, I've got obviously I've just pulled it out. I haven't even cleaned the nibs off yet. The uh, where it was joined to the fret. 
So I'll clean that all up and solder this and get these all fixed up. Anyway, I'll be back for part six. Well, so far I've um, I've soldered up the ba the very basic foot plate, which means fold folding up here. That's uh, the drag beam, the cab end. Soldering on two uh, valances. They're uh, uh, nickel silver, and they fit in grooves. Soldering on the front buffer beam. Uh, two eight BA captive nuts which is to attach the body to the chassis. So I've done all that and I've cleaned it all up, um, given it a really good clean, uh, scraped off excess solder, um, soaked it in baking soda or baking powder, uh, which is an alkaline to get rid of the flux. So I've done that. The other thing I've done is started the cab front. Um, I've soldered on uh, this piece here, it's uh, an overlay um, which the prototype had on. Originally the roof was lower um, but then they raised the roof so they, I suppose they patched in a piece, I don't know how they did it but they did. I put on the, spe the outside spectacle plates, there's inside ones as well which I've got there. Um, the other thing is, and this is a pretty good idea, Jim actually told you how to do this, is to use a blister pack plastic, and you see how I've, I've cut one out, but there, what I've, what I've done is within the internal one, which is there, before you cut it out, is to lay it over the top, and using a, um, a pin vise and a, and a sewing needle is to scribe round and then cut it out. Um, he also says, very wise, cut four. Uh, this is because you're bound to lose one. So I've put one in there. Uh, I'm going to put do another three now. Okay, I've now got the basic footplate fitted uh, uh, together. The cab front, I've pressed out some rivets, which actually weren't. Well, there was a couple of there were a couple of de uh, impressions there to put rivets in, but when I checked the real loco, there was rivets further down. So, so I've added those. Um, the kit doesn't say to do it, but I did. Uh, I've pulled off the cab sides and the beading off the fret. So this is one I've done. Basically, I've uh, there's a strengthening piece at the top because obviously that's pretty thin. So that just folds over, and I've soldered it. But I've put the beading on. You can see the beading, and it's got the handrail. Here's the other, I haven't done the other cab side yet. There's a side with beading, oh, sorry, with um, a strengthening piece. Here's the, be here's the beading. It's, uh, it's got a half inch line. Oh, sorry, I'm too close. You can see it's got a um, it's got a half edge, and that sits that sits on um, on there. So what I'll do is I'll get it right there with a the handrail, and I'll start bending it and tacking it around in a few places, make sure it's right, and then I will um, solder it solid. Okay, it's <coughs> tack soldered. What we're going to do is now. Flux it, put some solder in, get it all to flow, clean it up. Oh, and trim off, trim off the excess. I've now just uh, tack soldered the um, front. Um, haven't tack soldered the sides anything yet. 
that's the next thing to do, tack, so, tack it all up, make sure it's all square, then solder it up solid. I think I'll call this a day. Uh, I've put the cab on. I've still got to run a fillet of solder in the outside because there's a gap. You can see where you, you can see the little hole for the tab. So I've got to fill that. But I've uh, That's better. That's, look, that's pretty square. I've got to put a handrail from there. There's a little hole in the in the beading, and you can see that. Hang on. Let's... Oh, check out my legs. Oh. No, don't do that. Can you can see the hole? So there's a handrail. I think it's a 0.7 mil, and that just goes parallel with the cab front, and you just tack solder it down there. Heck, I'm going to do it now. Now I've told you about it. There you go. Done it. Exactly no idea. Let's see. Uh, what pack is it? It's a fourth. Now, daylight saving ends here. That's because we're in the southern hemisphere in Australia. So, yeah, it ends. So I get an extra hour of sleep. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Anyway, I've had enough. I'm going out to watch Escape for the Country. To the country. <laughs>